I want to show you a piece of essential equipment in the hand tool shop. It's called a shooting board, and I have had one of these pretty much all my working life. Um, what this is, this is uh, uh, um, essential to hand tool woodworking because it's the only way we can actually true up the ends of 45 degrees or 90 degrees on the end of a piece of wood. So if I wanted to true up the end of this piece of wood, I could take this, slide my plane along here, and it would guarantee the end being square. Similarly, I can take a, a mitered piece that I've pre-cut on a rough cut and take my plane and, and trim up the end of that wood. So this is, a this is one that I use. It's, um, it's got some hard material on the surface that makes the plane slide smoothly. And I've used plywood because it was the combination of the two were in one board. But I'm going to show you how to make one just out of pine so that you can get started straight away if you need a a shooting board, then you can make one with a few pieces of wood. Um, I've got uh, three pieces here. I've got a short piece which is going to go across here, so that's eight inches long, one and a quarter wide, and seven eighths of an inch thick. It could be three quarters. This one is four inches by nine inches, uh, 19 inches by seven eighths thick, and this one is a one by eight, and this one's 19 inches long. So this piece will sit on here. This will go underneath here as a stop so I can anchor it in my vise. And then I've got this piece here to make some uh, sliding wedges that go into recesses. One of the things we're going to do is we're going to be gluing long grain to long grain. So we'll be gluing this board to this board. But before we do that, we can cut all our recesses in here. We've got three recesses to cut, one at, 40, one at 90 degrees and then two at 45 where the wedges will slide in. So first of all, let me show, we'll map that out on this piece of wood. So from the end here, measure down five inches and square that line across. And then I'm just going to split the distance with what I got left here, which is 14. So I'm going to go 7 inches. I'm going to mark 45 degrees on here from that line. And then I'm going to cross this line here by about 1 inch from this mark here down here. It's not a critical measurement, so I'm saying about 1 inch. And that's going to give me the positions for my recesses. So my wedge is going on this side and on this side, and then it's going on this side. So next is I'm going to cut my wedge shape. I'm going to cut this to the same uh, wedge I have on this. So I'm going to measure this one. These are reversible, so you can flip this this way and this way, and these are wedged because they're sacrificial. You may need to replace these from time to time because the plane trims the end very frequently. So I've got a measurement here. This is going to be one and five eighths on the end of here. So I'm going to go one and five eighths here. Take this. Take a straight edge and join those two lines. This is thicker than the other material. The wedge material is thicker because this needs to stand up above. This one is a little thin, so I'm improving here. I'm adding this um, thicker material. Uh, I'm going to cut this down now, make my wedge. these wedges are going to be used separately they'll never be used in the same recess 
so they don't have to be identical. So you could clamp them together like this and you can make them identical if you want to. I'm just going to do it just to stabilize my plane and give me a wider surface. Try and make sure you're straight and not bowed in the middle. You don't want a belly on this. I've got my two pieces the same. I could do the other side. You can tell I'm against the grain on that one. So now my wedges are identical. There's no conflicting size. This, these are, I now take here and place these on here. I'm allowing it to overhang a little bit here because I'm going to trim that later. This will just show the position. Here, I'm taking this to this, this point here, not here, because we're going to be cutting this to 45 here in a little while. This is purely to show you the position so we can lay out for the recess and get the depths. So you can see here, this, here and here, and here, and here. These are going to show, that's going to be a marking gauge line between these two lines will give me the exact depth. So you can set whatever depth you want. I wouldn't go more than a quarter of an inch, that's plenty. So now, I eyeballed that, so I checked myself, and I'm right on a quarter of an inch. You can train your eye to do that. Here is my depth line. Push or pull. I'm pulling so you can see, but normally I would use this this way, and I would push this like this, this one goes all the way through. Now from here on it's going to be a super sharp knife because this, these three lines here, the 45s and the 90 degree have to be absolutely perfect. So I'm going to just touch up my knife. Course. Fine and super fine. Let's do the square one first. You'll be able to see here. This is this is a knife wall. This is where we constantly. But now this is the edge that the plane is going to ride against. So because of that, I'm taking all of my settings from this face. This is going to be a registration face. So my knife goes directly on here. Very light pass at first. Notice the configuration of my hand here. I've got my thumb. This is the nice thing about combination squares. My thumb is pressing here. These two fingers oppose the thumb so I get a good grip. 
and then these two thing, uh, fingers press the main beam of the square down and that keeps everything nice and flat so here like this so dead square and then your 45 mark is here gently very gently at first see my thumb my finger opposing three fingers on the top because of the extra length here so that's my knife wall done on that one flip over and pull gently then more heavily and then you can go as heavy as you like really after that it's not going to alter this then goes into the vise every time we go into the vise for safety gives us a good rigid so here I go along here This shooting board will last you forever, even in pine, it's never really going to deteriorate unless you get wet or sometimes wood gets wet. That ruins wo more wood than I know of anything really, apart from fire. So use your chisel, bevel up to, to chisel into that knife wall. Now here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go a little bit deeper with my knife wall, with the knife and after that I can go in with the saw. This will just deepen that curve, that, that cut. Like this. Slide up. This is so precise, really, as long as you have an accurate square. From here, I might uh, deepen this like this. Flick, that will go down to the depth of that cut. The same with this one. Now we can saw down to the gauge line. with a finer saw. Keep your thumb against the side of the saw, your fingers on the side of the saw, pushing into the knife wall, all the way along. Very critical not to jump out and establish another wall. Not, not a very critical depth really. Now this one, we're going to cut this one, we're going to establish this with the knife in a minute. chisel again here. I want to try to remove a lot of this waste here almost all the way across to this other line on this side
just go until it until you can feel it split I'm not I'm not trying to hit into this other wall I'm just doing it until it splits you can see watch here now see I'm stopping here I don't need to go any closer and then I just flick and that gets me into near the area and then I can see where I'm going with my chisel so I might go a little bit nearer here to this one you'll see why in a minute this one the same don't hesitate to use a mallet here you know a chisel hammer like I'm using and this last bit here and what I've got now is I've got something that I can really properly register my wedge against and I can establish this knife wall perfectly so I'm going to slide forward until this edge comes up to that or even past it wouldn't matter if I went past I'd I keep this long so I'll have a long registration face when I place my wood against it so maybe go even an, e an eighth of an inch past then take your knife once you have that registered just press it and keep it in place and run your knife right along this I'll take this out in a minute and show you on the other one because the pencil lines were just a, a rough guideline to to get you in place so I'm registering against this face here perfect with no gap so that when I come to this face this at this side of the wedge I can take my knife now and come right onto this edge here make a good pass and the same again so that's exactly where my knife wall needs to be it's perfect now I'm, I could use the same wedge as I said so I may mark this one now 45 and this one 90 just for my reference but it, at the moment it doesn't matter it will matter soon so this one again you can see I'm going to be bringing it this way so there's my crisp cut line here absolutely perfect slide this back so I just want a little bit of overhang not very much and then with my knife establish that second knife wall there into the vise watch here now you can see why these knife walls are so important to us as woodworkers with hand tools just resting on the top guiding the chisel tip this one is my power and then I just take the heel of my hand in here just a little bit it's not very hard it's not hard on your hand this At this time I'm going to go with my um, with my, the, just the beam of my square just to put a, a margin between me and my fingertips with the knife I'm going to run that right along there just to give me a little extra depth with my knife this 
the safety with hand tools is very critical. It's n there are not anywhere near the same dangers with hand tools that you get with machines. But there's st you still have to be conscious that you're working with super sharp tools. And the more you work with hand tools, the sharper your tools will probably get. And here, you know, what you can do with this to deepen that is you could pop your chisel on here. Try and use the same measure of a hammer blow as you go. Because this does move that knife wall slightly. Just another method, really. You can go all the way down with this if you wanted to. I'm going to recommend that you deepen your cut with the knife, uh, with the uh, saw from here. take out a lot of the waste here. And then you can take your chisel, you can go across the grain this way. I'm going straight into that uh, gauge line that I made before. I'm going to just use the heel of my hand and point upwards, skywards. And then a two-handed handhold like this. This is a technique we often use. And then short stabbing action like this, aiming upwards, not level. Bevel up, not bevel down. It's taking out the bulk of the waste, but not all of it. Same here. This is a much wider one here. So I'm reading the grain a little bit here because, uh, oops. That's good. A bit more awkward going at an angle like this, but not hard. Again, shooting skywards a little bit. I'll come in from the other side in a minute and we'll clean up from that side too. Here, be careful. Start on the long point, which is here. Move across this way. It'll give you a good start. Make sure you don't go underneath this edge here. side now. Right into the marking gauge line. Just go in a little bit just to give you a start then you can double up on your handhold again like this. 
keep shooting for the sky. This is pine, so it's going fairly easily, but mahogany works well, cherry, walnut, if you wanted a hardwood one, or a more dense grained wood. I like pine because it has a little yield to it, so when you drive your wedges, they really bite well in the pine. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull out, this is the cordless router, remember? And what I do is I set this to those gauge line depths there. This one's already set, it's, that's a little bit tight. There. And we can always go deeper, but just go shallow. Go to your line and if you need to go deeper, there would be nothing wrong with that. So here, I go across a little bit at a time, working from side to side, left to right, right, right to left. Now I'm looking at this and I'm not quite fully to depth on this one corner here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knife and just chisel down along, just uh, cut down here just a little bit really, just to get the little extra depth that I, sh I need, like that, and then trace that along that knife wall. it's a little bit more difficult because you have the hard and soft aspect to the annual ring so it does tend to not give us cleaner a clean out at the bottom especially if it's set deep like this one I've left too much wood on there so I'm just going to go in and remove some of the high rather than strain the wood and strain the tool then go back in and just take off that top layer, that final layer. And now I'm going to go, I'm going to set this just a hair deeper, just to clean up the surface. Gently, not, not bulldozing this. And I'm, I'm trying not to go out this outside edge so I can come in from this face so I don't have breakout on those unsuffi unsupported fibres. <sighs> Same on here. So much fun using a, a non-power router for this. It's, you feel like you're in control. You can see I don't have any jigs to hold it, guide it. And that's my 
Well, that, those are my recesses, Kurt. This was my 45, so this will go in here. And either way, it doesn't really matter. It's just when I come to my final cut for my 45. So this should now tighten up in there. And I'd drive that tight, and then I would mark this on the underside with my knife, which is what I'm going to do. Check it in this side. Make sure that the corners are crisp. A little bit of residue in here. There. So you can see I've got a nice crisp line in here. So I can turn this over now and mark my exact length from here, tap back, take my square, like this, this just stops tear out really. Now holding this isn't quite so easy, so I'm going to put it back into the... At least cut some of it this way. cutting just slightly past the end because I can run the plane through here afterwards and that will trim the end up perfectly like that and then this one is my 90 These fibers do compress, so even though I had this before marked exactly on, uh, because the compression inside the wood itself, so you could use hardwood if you wanted to, but this, these will work just fine for you, absolutely fine. see what I'm doing there, can you? This is just to establish the knife wall, give it a little depth so that the saw will sit into that recess perfectly. Tap these past. And all we need to do now is we're going to screw a block on the underside of here, like this. This is just going to be a stop that we can anchor this into the vise. So I'm going to use a drill. Thank you. 
be the glue on here. Now this is going to go here, you can see this will anchor in the vise, so I'm going to glue this long grain to long grain. Now you can screw this, on, on some of the ones I've made I just glue it and then I screw through these recesses, but I don't really like to do that because uh, for a variety of reasons really, but I hate to think that I might cut another recess or do something else and there's going to be a screw there. this in the vise now, stand it up, give that glue time to dissipate, a couple of clamps on here, and maybe two or three more in between. and then set it aside, leave it for two or three hours and that will be ready to work. And we'll show you this in action. I'm going to leave that to dry. Just had my lunch and this is dried up, cured and ready to go. Very simple project and um, one I think that you will find a lot of use for. So this fits in here. You can probably see on this one when I push this to here, it's about a sixteenth from the edge and on this one it's a little bit more but when you start tapping here it comes flush. There's one thing that's not very apparent is that on this edge is, is perfectly square to here there's going to be a step down here caused by this plain iron here is going to run along here. So this is one of the first things that we do. We stand this on its side, move that wheel forward so we're taking a slice here. Keep moving this now until a little bit more. So every time I turn that wheel, it's advancing it and what it's done is it's created this minute step down on here and um, that means that this now is, this part here is registering against there and it won't take any more off from here on. So this is how we shoot using the shooting board. I've just set this flush with that new rabbit that I just created. And uh, if I wanted to square up the end of a piece of wood now, I slide this on here, move it back. And because my wood is hitting against this sacrificial piece here, I get a nicely trimmed end grain there and you may have to twiddle with your adjustment because you can't take too much off using this, a little bit less.
This is going to break on this edge, and once it does, it'll stop. It won't do it anymore, it'll stop. But what you can also do is you can take your saw here and remove that corner. And then you can check this for square. You can see we're dead square. And we're also square this way. Alright, now then, let me give you another one. We're going to do the 45 degree. Let me show you how practical that one is, too. You would use your mitre box normally to cut this. A lot of times people misunderstand, they think the mitre boxes were not very accurate. And whereas they were not too accurate, they were uh, accurate enough. They didn't have to be too accurate. Let me show you here. So I'm going to set this to 45 degrees. And then check myself here for 45. This is just eyeballed, so you can see I've got a two degree discrepancy here, which means I have a two degree discrepancy on here. So this slides on here now. And you can see I just take it. What I'm doing with my left thumb is I'm just incrementally moving this forward in tiny notches till I start planing this surface and this is now so smooth it's just wonderfully smooth so I slide this here and then I move forward and I've got a very pristine crisp clean edge here when I do the other piece to marry that one I get these lovely, lovely shavings, end grain shavings. And you can maybe see, I put this here. <coughs> perfect mite, absolutely perfect. As good as I can get from any chop saw or machine uh, mitre. The difference between mine now is that it's absolutely planed in a single plane, so this is when I look on this end grain, I can see it sparkling from the lighting. That's a shooting board, that's all you need. This is reversible. Tap, bring it into this end, tap here. So if you had a mold on this, you'd be able to plane into the mold and it would give you a crisp, clean uh, profile.